Hey everybody, I hope you're ready for a very large book haul. I'm here to tell you about some amazing books coming out that I cannot wait to get on your TBR. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing? As always, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three. It has been a while, being honest, as you can probably still hear, I have been dealing with a head cold for the first time since probably uh, early 2020. I got sick for a good many days. Not um, corona, but just a head cold. But having not been sick for almost two years, um, it definitely was a doozy. So it sort of knocked me out from doing anything other than reading. I was able to get a lot of reading done, but I was not really able to get up and do videos or Instagram or anything. So reading and watching TV. But I'm back. I'm here. I have so many amazing books to tell you about. I've been planning videos. I have some fantastic things I'm working on, and I cannot wait to share them with you. So as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order these books from your local independent bookstores. They know you know they need you, they love you, and also if you're a library user, get your libraries to get you copies of these. Request them early so you can get your hands on them as soon as possible. Okay, so the first book I want to tell you about is When We Were Birds by Anya Lloyd Banwo, and this is coming out from Doubleday in March of 2022. It comes out on the 1st of March. Um, I was really intrigued by this because I have not read many books that take place in Trinidad and Tobago. And that's where this book is centered. And we have two, um, well, let's start with. So this starts with the St. Bernard family. They are a, a lineage of women who have lived on the same land for a long time, a piece of land that was um, re- um, taken over after it was formerly a plantation and this family has been living there. And for a very long time, the matriarch of the family has been the one who helps souls pass when they die, sort of helps them on to the next, um, to the next stage of their existence. And we have a young woman who has had a very difficult time with her mother. So when her mother passes, she doesn't, she hasn't passed down what is expected. And this young woman is just not ready for it. And then on the other side of the coin, we have this young man who has been raised to sort of avoid death. His mother is sort of, he's never attended a funeral. He's never gone to, um, he's never seen a dead body, all of that. Um, but his mother gets sick and he has to sort of throw that all away because he becomes a grave digger and it's to support her, to help her through this thing. So they, this young woman and this young man, meet at the gates of this very famous uh, cemetery and it's like partly like this historical family sort of um, magical realism thing and also part love story. And I think it just sounds absolutely fantastic. So that's When We Were Birds by... Ayana Lloyd Banwo out from Doubleday on March 1st, 2021. Let's take a moment for how beautiful that cover is. It is so gorgeous. Okay. Next, and this is a video that's up and coming, um, I am going to be doing a memoir project in 2022. I'm going to be, I've already started, you will see it, but I'm going to be reading a number of memoirs. I realized that in 2021, I didn't read any nonfiction not one. And memoirs are one of my favorite, favorite, um, I'm going to call it a genre, but that doesn't seem right. Um, and when I mentioned this on Twitter, um, a very, very nice man, Peter, who works over, Peter Blackstock, who works over at Grove, said, hey, Russell, have you heard that um, Bernadine Evaristo has a memoir coming out? And I'm like, have I heard? He's like, would you like one? I'm like, so thank you so much to Grove and Peter for sending me this copy. This actually comes out very, very soon. This is Manifesto on Never Giving Up by Bernadine Evaristo, who won the Booker Prize. I loved Girl, Woman, Other. Um, I'm so excited for this. And she dives into her life. Like she talks about her life and her career and always being sort of 
against the grain, a little on the outside looking in, and what she's done and how she's out used that to empower herself. Uh, it says she provides a hugely powerful perspective to com contemporary conversations around race, class, feminism, sexuality, and aging. I cannot wait. I've actually already started it. Um, but it is, she just, she's so amazing. So I'm so excited about Manifesto on Never Giving Up by Bernadine Evaristo. This just came out on January 11th. So again, I apologize. I'm a little bit behind because of being ill, but you should certainly get your hands on that. And if you haven't read any of her other books, you should do that as well. Um, <clears throat> next on the list is the new book, by Julie Atsuka, and it's called The Swimmers. This is coming out from Kanaf, and it comes out in February. Let me see if I can get an actual date. I just have that it comes out in February. Now, I have read Buddha in the Attic, and um, they just sent me her a re-release of her first novel, so I'm super excited. I think I can read all three of these books and sort of get um, Julie's literary... Um, story for like three novels in a row. I think that's really exciting. So what is The Swimmers about? The Swimmers is about a group of very, very passionate, obsessed recreational swimmers and what happens one day when the uh, crack appears in their pool. And this book has a lot to do with relationships. It deals with mothers and daughters. It deals with loss and memory and all of that. And it also really dives into the life of one woman's experience about being Japanese here in America. Um, Buddha in the Attic was fantastic. It was everywhere, and rightly so. So I'm super excited. And someone just read this, and I apologize. Someone who I trust greatly just read this, I can't remember, and raved about it. So I'm super excited. So that is The Swimmers by Julie Atsuka, out from Kanaf in February. You can get your hands on it. Okay. Do you all remember The History of Bees, the novel by Maja Lund Lundy? I think that's how you say your name. It was everywhere. And when I read the premise for her new book and saw that it was coming out from Harper Via, which is one of my favorite new imprints, everything I've read from them, I'm absolutely loved. One of their books wound up on my top 10. Um, I was so excited. So this is her new book, The Last Wild Horses, by Maja Lundy, and this is translated from the Dan Norwegian, sorry, by Diane Oatley, um, and this book is coming out also in February. Um, I don't have an exact date, but so this book is told in three parts in three different time periods, all around a certain breed of horse. So in, there's a section in the future in 2064 where um, we have a woman named Ava who runs a farm and everyone is trying to convince her to leave that farm, but she has a pregnant wild mare that's about to foal and she is not willing to do that. And then in 1992, we have Karen who, um, she travels to Mongolia to reinduce a breed of horses um, to their native land. And then we have, we're going back in time in Russia in 1881, where we have Mikhail, who finds the skeleton of a rare wild horse, and it's brought to him, and he plans to go to Mongolia on an expedition to find out about it. And I'm all of that's going to come together, right? Because that just makes sense. But I think it sounds really exciting. I love books about animals. I love about saving animals. I love all of that. So again, this is The Last Wild Horses by Maja Lundy. This is translated from the Norwegian by Diane Oatley. And again, it comes out in February from Harper Via. If you are not on the Harper Via train, you really, really should be. Please look at the books that they're coming out with. They are so, so good. What did I read last year? Bright, bright burning. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. That one was fantastic. Um, three o'clock in the morning, which made my top 10. So yeah, I'm super, super behind Harper V and love them very much. And another publisher I love, I love all of these publishers. What am I saying? Um, coming out from MCD at FSG is Red Milk by Sujan. Um, I always struggle with his Icelandic name. Let me see who translated this one. Give me just a minute. Um, translated from the Icelandic by Victoria Cribb. I want to be honest with you. So I read, I read two of his books and I really love them. This one sounds, this one sounds dark and this one sounds heavy. Um, and it, I'm just going to just tell you that it's about a mysterious Icelandic neo-Nazi and the enduring global allure of fascism. So it's like part 
biography part mystery so it's like got that whole thing but it's like telling the story of an Icelandic man and he was the founder of the Icelandic anti-Semitic party and really how he came from um, a family that was anti-Hitler but how that changed and who he became and what he did so um it does it sounds very very dark but I trust the author so much so I'm really interested for Red Milk by Sojun now this was originally supposed to come out last year, but I think it was just released this year. I apologize. I don't have the exact date, um, but um, I'm really excited, but also like slightly nervous that this book is going to be one of those ones that it's going to have all the, fe the emotions involved in it. So definitely get your hands on it if you like that kind of stuff. Um, this book is already out, and that's Our Kind of People by Carol Wallace. This is out from Putnam. Um, this is a Gilded Age New York novel where all there's all this stuff coming out about New York in the Gilded Age. I think there's a new show on HBO that's coming out very Bridgerton in um, feel esque, you know. But this is about Helen Wilcox. Um, she's got one one plan in her life, and that's to launch her daughters into society. She um, is from the upper crust herself, but she has a very unconventional marriage, which sort of has put her daughters in a precarious position. And then her husband, we're in New York, so he gambles the family money and fortune on this elevated railway. And whether or not it's going to come to fruition, are, is the family going to lose everything? Is that, how is it going to affect them? And um, before it comes to fruition, will it ruin the family? Like, will these girls, these young women, be able to enter society and get what they need? And it talks about how the daughters have to navigate this and are forced to re-examine who they are, given what they find out. So, that's Our Kind of People by Carol Wallace. This is out from Putnam. And I think you can get your hands on this one right now. Putnam puts out a lot of these historical um, fiction paperbacks that are so good. Um, and they always are just like a fantastic little, like, you just want to cuddle up, get your, your little cup of hot chocolate and read it and just dive into these worlds. So I'm really excited about that one. Um, this one sounds a little bit different and that's Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. And this is coming out from Doubleday. This doesn't come out until April. Let me see if I can get you April 5th of 2022. This book came with the most adorable old school pencil. You remember those yellow pencils we, some of us, maybe not all of us, um, younger people probably not, used in school? Um, now, it was, it was just so absolutely charming. So... This is about chemist Elizabeth Zott. Now, in the early 1960s, she is at Hastings Research Institute, and she is on a team with all men. And as you can imagine, um, she doesn't get treated equally on that. But only one person really does, and that's this Calvin Evans, who is this lonely, brilliant Nobel Prize winner. And he not, um, falls in love with falls in love with her. And all things... He falls in love with her mind because in 1960s, that would be, oh, she's more than just a woman. She's a person. She's a brain. She's everything she is. You know what she's going at. You know what the author is going at. Um, but science is not predictable. And so a few years later, Elizabeth actually finds herself to be a single mom. And she also finds herself to be this reluctant star of a cooking show. But she's using, I'm going to just read it. It says, Elizabeth's unusual, unusual approach to cooking, combined one tablespoon of acetic acid with a pinch of sodium chloride, proves revolutionary. But as their following grows, not everyone is happy, because as it turns out, Elizabeth Zott isn't just teaching women to cook. She's daring them to change the status quo. So, this book sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, if you like. Um, oh, you know how sometimes you're about to say the title of a book, you can see the cover, and... Uh, it just sits there. That's what's doing it for me now. But I just feel like this is going to be fantastic. I know it comes out in April, so it's going to be a great summer read. You know, bring it to the pool. And let's just watch Elizabeth do what I, I think we know what Elizabeth's going to do. She's going to teach them all a lesson. A Lesson in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, out from Doubleday, April 5th, 2022. Okay, let's do a little uh, fantasy novella coming out from Tor. And that's 
Um, Comeuppance Serve Cold by Marion Deeds. This is coming out in March of 2022. At the end, I think, uh, yeah, the 22nd. Um, one, I think this cover is absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is set in Seattle in the 19, late 1920s. And it has to do with, oh, it just, well, it's a little bit hard because it's like this speakeasy thing with magic mixed in. Um, it says, a respected magist and city leader is intent on criminalizing Se Seattle's most vulnerable magickers, hires a young woman as a lady companion to curb his rebe rebellious daughter. There's a widowed owner of a speakeasy who encounters an opportunity to make her husband's murderer pay while she tries to keep her shape-shifter brother safe. And a notorious thief slips into the city to complete a delicate and dangerous job that will leave chaos in its wake. One thing is for certain. Comeuppance, eventually, waits for for everyone. Now, I had to look up comeuppance um, because for some reason when I see this word, I think of uh and I was just about to say the word I think about and now it's totally blanked in my mind. This is what happens when you've been sick and you just, well, your brain doesn't work 100%. But I think this sounds like it's going to be so much fun. And I now follow the author on Twitter and I really, really enjoy her. So that's Comeuppance Serve Cold um, by Marion Deeds coming out from Tor and it comes out on March 22nd. So if you are a fantasy novella person, that's the book for you. Okay. When I posted this one, this book on my Instagram, so many people were so excited about it. So that made me even more thrilled. It does sound dark. I'm just going to tell you. That's Devil House by John Darnie, Darnielle. And he wrote White uh, Wolf in the White Van. And I'm probably saying his last name incorrectly. This is also coming out from MS. D, uh, MCD at FSG, and it comes out actually at the end of this month. I think either next week or the, uh, yeah, next week, next week. Um, and so Devil House is for you thriller horror right readers. I don't often recommend stuff like this. Watch me throw this back and forth in front of my face. Um, Devil House is the story of Gage Chandler. Um, his mom has told him his whole life he's descended from kings, and um, that's what she's always told him. And years later, he's a true crime writer. He's had one really big success. It was turned into a film, and he's had some not-so-great successes since. Um, but now he's been offered this chance to move into this house uh, where a pair of briefly notorious murders occurred in... Um, the, during the satanic panic of the 1980s. Now, he finds himself in Milpitas, California. I have to be honest with you, that is literally 20 minutes north of me. I could drive to Milpitas in the time it takes you to watch this entire video. And he begins his research, And but as he starts to dive in, he recognizes Milpitas. He thinks he knows something about it. And as he puzzles this all out, it, it's all going to come together. It sounds really, really good. So that's Devil House by John Darniel and out from M MCD at FSG coming out next week. You can get your hands on it. Okay. I'm trying really hard. I have three books left, so I'm going to try to talk fast. Pure Color by Sheil Sheila Hetty um, is coming out again. FSG sent me a lot of stuff. Thank you so much. And this one comes out on February 15th. However, this one is one of those books where it's sort of philosophical and um, it's hard to explain. When I read the back of it, it reminds me a lot of Flights. Do you, do you guys read Flights by Olga, Paul, uh, um, Nobel Prize winning Olga? Um, it sort of feels like that. So it says, here we are just living in the final draft of creation, which was made by some great artist who is now getting ready to tear it apart. In this first draft of the world, a woman named Mira leaves home to study. There she meets Annie, whose tremendous power opens Mira's chest like a portal. To what? She doesn't know. When Mira is older, her beloved father dies, and a spirit passes into her. Together they become a leaf on a tree. But photosynthesis gets boring, and being alive is a problem that cannot be solved, even by a leaf. Eventually, Mira must remember the human world she's left behind, including Annie, and choose whether or not to return. It sounds so weird, but it sounds so amazing. And there's something about this very simple cover I find absolutely arresting. Um, I'm super excited about this one. I want to, like this idea of turning with your father into a leaf and observing the world and realizing you don't want that life. And can you come back to the life you left? 
All of that sounds so interesting to me. So that's Pure Color by Sheila Hetty out from FSG, FSG on February 15th. Okay, two more. One more thriller for y'all. Girl in Ice by Erica Frenner. Fren, Fren, kick. Oh my gosh, Russell. Um, this is coming out from Scout Press. Let me just make sure. I can't remember if this one is translated. I do not believe it is. It is not. Okay, good. So this is the story of a linguist who is, um, her brother committed suicide and she's really, really struggling with that. So she goes on up to the Arctic Circle um, to communicate with a young girl who arrives alive after being frozen in ice. Who knows what that is? Is that enough? I feel like, one, I already see the movie in my head. Two, I feel like this is going to be an absolute page turner. This one actually just came out, so you can get your hands on it. Girl in Ice by Erica Frenick, and this is out from Scout Press. So, okay, last but not least is one of my most anticipated reads of 2022, um, and because it's such, it's going to be such a feel-good read. Um, you all remember how much I loved the Jane Austen Society by, Society by Natalie Jenner. This is her new book. It's coming out on May 17th from St. Martin's Press, and it's called Bloomsbury Girls. And I am just obsessed with the nostalgia of the cover. I love the, I just love it so very, very much. So we are in a bookstore in the 1950s. It's quiet. It's traditional. It's dusty. It is run by men who are determined to keep it exactly that way. But there are three women that work in the store, and you know what? They're not willing to let it stay that way. So the only way forward for Vivian, Grace, and Evie is to contend with the domineering male staff, band together, and take over the bookshop. I love a book about, I love, love, love books about bookstores. I just think they're so much fun. I love that it's set in the 1950s. I love London. I love all of this. And I want these women to kick butt. And I want them to do what they want to do. And I want them to change the narrative. And I'm so excited. So that's Bloomsbury Girls by Natalie Jenner coming out on May 17th, 2022 from St. Martin's Press. So I hope I did a, gr a pretty good job of explaining these books. I apologize. It was a little rough there every few minutes. Turns out I'm not quite got my brain back to work in 100% given that I have been sick. But I really do think that all of these books, that's a big stack, belong on your TBR. I really, really do. So if you've read any of them, if you've heard any of them, if you want to talk about them, please do so in the comments below. I could not do this. If you are a return subscriber, you are the bread and butter of what I do. I appreciate you so very, very much. If you are new to my channel, I got a lot of new subscribers from my uh, ten, top 10 list. Thank you so very, very much. It was so exciting to see my uh, subscription, my subscribers grow. I hope, I hope, I hope that you pick up one of these books moving forward. So as always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everyone.